at windyoringi.com and today I'm going to present to you um, how to grow your audience using SEO uh, which all of you know is search optimization um, search engine optimization and specifically how the writing process looks like so um, I'm a writer I write at Ringi or Ringgit um, as a hobby which I've already monetized but my day work is to provide um, communications work for companies. I do reports and reporting things like that. So, um, just to have a quick look at how the website looks like, um, that's the, you know, this is mostly how I get my clients. So, people come in, are seeing my articles online, and then they have, I have a button there, click hire me, and if they like my writing work, they usually, some of them, um, converted into paying clients who engage in my writing services. So that's what I do for uh, Ringo or Ringgit. Um, who here agrees with this statement? Okay, because if you don't, the other one is good too, it's automation. <laughs> you can join that one, no problem at all. Um, why do you think that SEO is important for you? For media companies, I understand. Of course, you want more traffic, with more traffic, you can monetize your audience, um, you can you know, sell ads, you can get sponsored posts, uh, you can earn money from traffic. But for the rest of you, the, the server guys, the web developers, why do you want to learn SEO today? Anybody just want to shout it out? Yeah? Free traffic. Free more traffic. Copy. Alright, so I'm guessing some of you who uh, work a little bit more on the technical side, you would like to implement SEO so that you can get clients who will hire you for your technical work. Is that correct? Right? And here, I would like to tell you, um, those who do work inside the technical side of things, people like me who create content have no idea <laughs> sometimes what you talk about. Right? Um, throughout, and this is something that have been a, a, a kind of like a recurring theme. So whenever I attend like WordPress meetups, for example, and when it's sometimes it's even things as basic as like uh, the importance of like caching your your um, your content so that the website speed is faster. Sometimes people like me have no idea. So at the end of this workshop, I'm gonna like give you guys especially the web developers and people who target um, companies, media publishing companies and companies doing e-commerce on how you can market yourself better to, to get more clients from this sector. Yeah, so that both of you, all of us who are in the WordPress community can at least hopefully talk to each other a little bit better. Um, just, to, just a couple of slides to let you know that I know a little bit of what I'm talking about. Um, this is a screenshot of my Google Analytics. And it's a little bit unclear here, but if you can see, um, this is from, what's the date? They didn't show date, but from 1st of January this year all the way until now, 75% uh, of my traffic is from Google. The rest, 13% uh, is from direct. So people who come from Google and after that they come to <coughs> it. And then the rest of it is all from like referrals from other websites and other social media. So you can see how, by implementing SEO inside the work content, you can get, it's the cheapest way to build sustainability for your traffic for long term. It is the cheapest way. And then I also did a couple of website reports for um, the website um, SEO A+. So, not begging, just telling you that um, so far, so good lah. So far, so good. Okay. Okay. Uh, the writing process of SEO is a two part. The first part, you already know, the writing process. But before that, there's a little bit of a prep work that you have to do. Um, first of all, keyword research. I'm gonna just quickly scroll through this. Things that you kind of have to know what is available from for WordPress, from like building a website, making sure that the UX is good, that it's clear, and things like that. The technical aspects, right? Um, this particular workshop is not for those prep book discussion, but I will cover it a little bit more later. Uh, this is the actual writing process. First of all, you have to know your audience. And this is something that is surprisingly um, 
hard for people who block for a living. For them, it's it's a surprisingly common for people who think that they what they think is the most important thing in the world. And I'm saying that because there are people out there who think that their opinion matters above all else. I'm sorry to put it that bluntly, but what people want to know exactly is A, is it educational, or B, is it entertaining? So if it's not one of these things, if it's something that just, you know, you rage out all your emotions, it's something that is not so valuable for your audience. It has to be helpful. And the second one is a keyword or key phrase in mind. So when I mean this, and there are so many keyword um, generation tools that you can use, I will talk about it later. Um, the third one is that within the blogging circles, at least, um, they, especially for people who are perfectionists, right? They want to make sure that everything is perfect so they don't write anything out. Um, so the first draft, just finish the first draft. And then um, I would say that longer content is better. There is a statistic that says that um, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 word content is shared at least three times more than shorter form content. For the media in the room, can you share with me how long is usually your article size? 5,000. 5,000? Wow, which one? That is amazing, I should keep it up, no, really keep it up. Anyone else want to share how much more or less? 2,000 words. Awesome, keep it up. Um, a little bit of a side story. Last time I used to work as an editor with a platform that supplies content for companies. So they are like the middle person, right? And they used to do a lot of um, keyword stuffing. So they have all these guidelines, say, say for example, resort in Kuala Lumpur, all right, or resort in Bali, right? And inside the guidelines, they would put things like, okay, insert at least five of these keywords, uh, make sure it's at least 400 words, um, you know, uh, make sure to include at least one external link, and as long as the, the writer who satisfies all of this, um, you know, satisfies all of this, they will accept it. But over the long term, we found out that none of those work. Because why? Because keyword stuffing doesn't work. Google is so much smarter than that. So the point that I'm trying to make is that quality always trumps quantity of content. And here's a pro tip for you. You have to answer as many questions as you can about the topic. And this is something that many content out there do not address. So if, say, for example, when somebody wants to shout out an industry that they're in. Web design. Huh? Web design. Web design, okay. Questions about web design. I would like to know, for example, uh, how much is the price? How much is the timeline? How uh, how long? Uh, how is the steps are usually like? But in most of the website, in, in the content about web design, I can usually see that there is, uh, especially the shorter ones, they are usually you know they are very um, promotional, just from one. What we, what people would like to know is like a more like a pro con list, right? This is something that I always use when I drop my content, this is a really, really good website. Um, it's called answerthepublic.com and it's a bit too small, but if you can see, right? Inside here, I put a keyword, inside there I put thumb drive, so you, your keyword is thumb drive, or the topic that you want to write about is thumb drive, and it will share with you, but um, types of thumb drives, where to get thumb drives, it even gives you synonyms of the words. So there are also keywords here for flash drives, for example, and also things like um, the um, length span of the thumb drive, how long you need to use, uh, security tips for using thumb drives, so things like that. And the more your content will insert answers that the public wants to know, <coughs> the better it is. So until now, I have covered how the first step of the writing process, but this is where the magic happens, which is the editing process. A surprising number of content creators do not edit their work, unfortunately. And when they don't edit their work, there's a lot of 
type uh, a lot of um, typos, a lot of grammatical errors, formatting lari. Um, there's a lot of um, the, the keywords that they use are not consistent throughout. So here I want to show you how I do step by step. After the first part just now, which is just inside one article, just kind of bring down what I have already written. So I have a, a, a draft, say for example 2,000 words, and then when I upload it inside WordPress, first of all, you have to insert the keyword inside the permalink, which is on top. Um, a surprising number of websites still use, can you... But a surprising number of, of um, websites out there still use um, after their dot com still have like an, an additional like 2018 slash you know the date. You don't need that. Take it away, right? The shorter the better. Huh? So now that you know, in this particular example, it's an article that I've written about braces. So and very specifically about the price of braces in Malaysia. Um, and Inside the permalink, permalink is uh, the keyword which is basis cost in Malaysia. I added it inside the title and I added it inside the image punya alternate text. Who here doesn't know what is alternate text? Alternative text. Okay, I assume everyone knows them. <coughs> and then there's people at the end which I will show you later. Um, okay, so during your editing process, Obviously, you want to maintain your style of writing. Every platform has their own voice, their own style. Maintain that because that makes your uh, content. That's what will bring your audience back to you. But what you can do is during the editing process, as much as possible, your keywords always put it in the first few paragraphs. So that Google will immediately know that this topic, uh, this, uh, this article includes this topic and therefore will rank it higher in the search engine. Always put also headings throughout. There's a surprising number of um, content out there which does not use headings, does not use um, uh, bullet points, for example, things that make it easier for the audience to read. So it's all about readability, right? Um, also, in this particular case, it's about basis cost in Malaysia. Also put your alternative keywords. So for example, inside here, there are also costs of, um, the heading there is conventional basis cost in Malaysia, for example, and then down one basis cost in Malaysia, and further down is like uh, Invisalign basis cost in Malaysia. So people who are, who are keying in those keywords as well, there's a higher likelihood of, for them to find your website, right? Um, and of course, use short paragraph, uh, use headings, use bullet points, things that makes it easier for people to, to find you. And always inside your website, add your internal links, um, other uh, content that you've written um, inside your own website, and also external link, preferably from a very strong website, um, so that it shows Google that you are linking it not to like spammy websites, but like strong websites itself. So that helps your ranking as well. Okay. Here, <laughs> I want to share with you what it sometimes uh, the especially if you do like long keyword, right? Sometimes they are weird. Uh, in I will give you one example. This one, the keywords are side income Malaysia. There's no way I can put that natively inside an article. I can't just put, oh, do you want side income Malaysia? It doesn't work. Grammatically, it is incorrect. Uh, <laughs> but what you can do, there's a few tips that you can that you can implement so that your article will still uh, rank high on SEO. The first one would be, still of course do it in your, insert it in your permalink and things like that. Um, add more images, because the more images you add, uh, one thing is that you can put them as the alternate, uh, as the alternate text, right? And as much as possible, these are the types of articles that you want to make sure that the quality is even more than your other posts if your keywords are weird, right? And when I say ensure good readability, um, everyone here is familiar with Yoast SEO, punya plugin, amazing one. That's pretty much the only one I use. Um, anyone use the premium version? Use the premium, would you recommend it to the rest of us? Yes. Yeah? Okay, so with the Yoast one, you can add additional focus keywords. I have never used it myself, I'm waiting for the sale. <laughs> Personal finance blogger. <laughs> okay, so you can check if your article have good readability if under your use 
as you open your plugin, uh, things all like green, 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 green. So you can see in this particular example, the one on top is still green. So it is still doable even if your keywords are, I mean, if your keywords are weird. Um, I want to give you a couple of websites that I personally use in order to check minor errors and mistakes. How many of you have heard of this website called Grammarly? How many of you use the premium version? <coughs> Invest in the premium version. I assure you it's worth it. Again, wait for um, Monday, yeah, Cyber Sale. Uh, I got it last year for Cyber Sale. It's like 70% off, right? Like, wait for it. Um, it will check, make sure that for Malaysia, if you don't know, um, we use UK English. So sometimes when I go to like other websites, right, and they use US English, like, uh, why you use American English? Um, but yeah, they will check for your typos, your um, if you have like passive, um, apa ni, passive sentences, they will suggest it to change it to active sentences. Uh, they will check for your spelling. The, they will check for like sentence structure. And inside here also, you can move around your sentences before you upload your final version inside. Um, inside your WordPress punya <coughs> apa ni um, what do you call it? punya tempat <laughs> I can't remember what it's called um, they also have a Google Chrome setting where you can edit directly from your WordPress punya tempat okay. and another one that I use HemingwayApp.com um, this is really good to ensure good readability um, it will also show you how, if it's easy for people to read or not. One of the things that, one of the, I would say, diseases that many content creators make is that because they want to make themselves sound clever so that people will engage with their services, they just end up confusing their audience. Instead of using a simple word um, like, you know, like teach, they would use something like to facilitate. It means the same thing, but it's, the simpler the words that you use, especially if you are a B2C kind of um, business model, where your audience is person using the, the you know layman's language, the simpler your words, the easier it is for you to get clients. In fact, the reason why I think that the website does um, Alhamdulillah okay, um, is that I have broken down financial jargons into easier to understand language. So that's why it's um, Alhamdulillah okay. Uh, I want to share with you also one book that I personally recommend. Uh, this is called On Writing Well, <coughs> The Classic Guide to Writing Non-Fiction. I highly, highly recommend this book. Uh, it's written by William uh, Zinser, um, and it has more than like a million copies. So, and um, this is something that it's very easy to read. Um, you know, within one week that you can probably finish it. But it will give you the key steps that you can use to write your pieces, especially if you want to distribute it to the mass, mass audience. So they will give you some examples where, um, how, um, you know, what kind of mistakes that, that people in the technical industry use, for example, when they write their content, and what kind of suggestions you can use instead of using those words so that people can understand what you're trying to say. Right? So, I really recommend it. Alright. Um, I, here, I would like to just know if you have any other suggestions. This is pretty much the only, your CEO is pretty much the only plugin that I checked for my SEO. Um, I just write, 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 write until it turns green and then after it's green, I'm like, okay, touch it a bit more and then publish. Um, but does anyone here want to share how else do you check whether your SEO is good? Or your SEO is good enough for you? If it's good enough for you, it's good enough for you. <coughs> Alright. Okay. Um, again, I want to stress that quality of content matters more than the quantity of your content. Right? The longer it is, the more questions you answer, the more helpful you are to your audience, the more simple your language so that people can understand, the more people will backlink to you, and the more that you do that, um, the more Google will recognize that your website is good and therefore rank it higher. That's pretty much the only strategy that I use, right? Um, but at the same time, also don't ignore the technical aspects. 
Uh, during the prep work earlier, during the slides, can I tell you about how all the technical aspects? Uh, I, I cannot vouch that Abraham Lincoln actually said this, but he said, I think, uh, give me six hours to chop down the tree and I will spend the first four hours sharpening the knife. He implemented into the whole content creation and distribution strategy, if you have all of your prep work in place, the easier it is for your article to do the right things in, uh, in terms of um, SEO. <coughs> so, here's, here's the problem though. Look at all this math tech world. Who knows what is math tech, by the way? Marketing tech, exactly. I just found out earlier this year. I had no idea that this world exists. And do you know, when I was researching this, right now, as of right now, uh, companies have started to spend more on marketing technology tools instead of the amount that they spend on marketing personnel for salaries, for you know, for people that they hire doing marketing for them. Tools have taken over in terms of spending amount, and it's only going to get higher and higher from now on. If you see the chart, um, I think like a couple of years before this, there's only a, a, a few thousand only, only a few thousand, but now there's more than 5,000 marketing technology tools. I would like to say that as content creators, you should know and keep up with marketing technology, but it's pretty much impossible, <laughs> let's face it. So what you can do instead is, and here I would like to, to share with you some common problems that content creators face, because again, in the beginning I asked if um, uh, who, are, who is in the audience? So on one side, they are the content creators, right? And uh, the people who are doing content creation as lead generation strategy. On, on the other hand, there are people, there are the uh, technical people who are selling, you know, web design and plugins and tools and teams, right? Who would like to work together more with the uh, content creators in order to make it better. But during my whole blogging process, here are some problems that I personally face. First of all, I started off with free, and then when I switched to paid, I didn't have any idea on how to migrate or pick hosting providers. And when I talked to my friends, they say that, oh, Suraya, I can change hosting providers in my sleep. So do you see the gap in knowledge that we have here, right? In terms of website design, where can you buy themes? And then I figured out, oh, wow, there are marketplaces. Right. It might sound like super um, obvious for you now, but during the time, wow, discovering that there are marketplaces that sell things. When I first started blogging, I didn't know that you can buy things. I thought you have to do everything from scratch. Right. In terms of plugins, which plugins do you use? What types of them uh, are they? And how do you make sure that they do not clash with each other? And are they compatible with your website? Right. Again, some problems. CSS, what the hell are they? <laughs> Where are they? So sometimes when you read, right? So I tried to DIY everything myself, right? Didn't work. I tried to find okay how to add CSS to do to to get like email subscribers, for example. Found out that some coding brought me to some GitHub. Did not know what the hell are you talking about. So web developers, um, I will give you some suggestions after this. Anyway, uh, what to optimize for people like. <laughs> For content creators, sometimes we don't really want to know into the nitty gritty stuff. We just want to know, okay, what can be better, and how do I do it? What aspects inside my platform that um, are you know lacking right now in terms of either security or like speed or like user experience? What are what are some aspects that are not so great? Can you just tell me, and I want to do it. So that kind of like health diagnosis. And troubleshooting, you have no idea who you trust. Be before attending all these WordCamp, um, WordPress uh, meetups, I didn't know that WordPress was um, open source for developers, um, you know, for, um, by WordPress volunteers, for WordPress uh, community. Um, trust issue is a big thing, right? So, so for people who work inside this kind of community, um, this is the second time that I'm presenting this, and during last time, I saw some of the people in the audience go like, oh, okay. Um, these are things like this. These are people, these are things that people like me, content creators, personally want, right? How do you turn your website from like, amateur to professional? 
even things that I mentioned just now, like taking out all the dates from your permalink. Even now, if you go into like the blogging community, I would say at least half them, or more than half of them, are still doing that. Right? This is how big of a market that you have. How to turn it into professional, how to help them get started with like different teams and what to pick, basically. Um, plugging optimization services. For example, how do you include social media? What kind of social media can you include inside your platform? How do you, how you, how do you add them in? Um, how do you automate your marketing uh, materials? Um, how do you add um, e-commerce bundles? Which one are good? Which payment gateways should you select, for example? Um, workshops uh, for, for bloggers and also SMEs. Uh, things like teaching us basic CSS so that we don't have to go to GitHub. Uh, things like how to add newsletters um, inside your inside at the end of the article, for example, or at the site. How do you organize things like contests and giveaways? How do you do SEO? How do you do tools, for example, like what kind of tools would they recommend to do graphic design or best practices? And then uh, basic things like website enhancement services, uh, layout, A-B testing, speed. So for the content creators and the media publications in the room, um, here's something that I would really like to suggest to you. Um, get your website audited. Uh, so basically, liken it to something like a health checkup. Go to doctor, go to a website doctor, and then get them to give you a service like the one that I showed you before, the one that gives you like A in different aspects like A, B, and things like that. And then let them tell you what are uh, lacking inside your website and let them give you recommendations on what you can improve. Um, I would suggest for you to go to at least two people so that it's like going to doctor, like getting different opinions, right? And then from then on, you can maybe give them a budget. Okay, I want to improve this aspect. For example, speed. I have a budget of, say, I don't know, uh, 5,000 ringgit. What can you give me for this particular price point? Um, and then, yeah, for web tests also, the contents and the guides that I see out there, um, please make it simpler for people like me to understand. This is like, a, like seriously, please. <laughs> Very hard to understand. Okay, I would like to leave here for questions and answers, if you have any. <coughs> any SEO related questions? Okay, hi. Um, this one you're talking about SEO in English, right? Yes. So I was working on SEO in Malay, yeah. which is uh, the one that you said need uh, the bullet to be green. I always, I always get red or yellow. Yeah. Yeah. So how do I improve in Malay SEO? Ah, uh, good question. I cannot answer you. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, very good question. Anyone can answer that question. <laughs> But the basic implementation still works. So if you put them in the permalink, if you put it in the inside the images when your alternative text, if you put it inside the headings, so even though it's like read because they don't recognize Malay language, it should work. Yes? Right, right. Talking about all this SEO, you've been talking about what you've done, uh, see your, for your articles and your website. Mm -hmm. Have you or do you consider off-site SEO works such as recruiting other bloggers to link to you and uh, link buildings and stuff like that? What I do right now is I, I'm part of the writing committee. I'm also part of the blogging committee and social media committee. So we help each other to um, improve our work, improve our um, formatting, give each other feedback in that capacity. In terms of uh, uh, providing work for companies for project wise i have done that before um but in my own personal capacity yeah i need to rephrase that yeah because my question is going towards a different direction you see uh do you do off-site seo like uh, link, uh link building to your specific articles are uh, you mean like commenting on yes. other people's websites example mm. so for maybe do you recruit other brokers to I have this article, would you like to link to my article and take it out? Do you do things like that? I don't do it actively, no. Personally, I don't do that actively. Yeah. I maintain on the quality part, so 